What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Railroads Online. Joined once again by Heist. How's it going, sir? How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. I'm right, excited we, we got uh, got a couple more hoppers back there. Yeah, we got the Telegram offices now, or Telegram. I keep calling them oh, well, Telegrams. That's right. the telegram, yes. I keep, I, it's Telegraph. It's only because of Graham when a guy on a horse picks up the message. That's what, you know, that's the... Precisely. The, the, I'm going to get us going here, because I'm assuming we're not hanging out at the freight depot. But no. yeah, I saw... I saw you did that whole episode about uh, about the telegraph houses. That was well put together, and and uh, I wasn't invited. <laughs> well, I mean, you could have joined. I didn't. I was. I was actually curious when I was going through the tele. Do you? How much do you know about telegraphs? Because I, I looked really up some do facts. not know. Okay, yeah, I wasn't anything sure anything about telegraph. Your video is actually really helpful for me because you started to talk about semaphores, and I was like, no, Con, that's what early signals were called for the. Oh wait, no, I don't know this. <laughs> yeah, no, it was actually it was actually apparently they'd have towers and stuff, and they'd like flag different flags in different positions and that would determine which letter it was and people with telescopes would look at the tower and like relay the message kind of like lord of the rings style you know i was gonna say but <laughs> the beacons the... of minister of the lit I'll, I'll, Gondor surprisingly Gondor enough, i mean i'll give you one guess as to what the problem with that is uh it doesn't work at night it doesn't work at night and it doesn't work in bad weather so oh yeah yeah they were like well this kind of sucks and then telegrams came along or telegraphs and they were like wow we can send faster than train communications and that was that was the biggest thing they were a really really helpful thing for the railroad too because that meant that you could communicate things from a central location and let you know other status of trains without right, and they would track any other method like yeah. track schedules in one central location and, and make adjustments as needed etc etc um i'm gonna do something cool i'm gonna warp to the sawmill <laughs> bye con con's gone because i can warp here and now set your switches you see that's actually genius i, and then, I, and I, then I use knew the it was gonna be through. cool i knew it was gonna be cool and i knew it was gonna be really helpful like that yeah but i didn't like you doing that right now just feels wrong. Like, I've played this game for so long without it that that's just totally neat. Yeah, it's, it's actually kind of awesome. Okay, I think these are actually set because I'm pretty sure I came back from the Telegraph office on the wood line. Anyway, you're going to come through there. You're going to come here. You're going to go there. Then you're going to turn left. Yeah, you'll be good. All right, so I'll just wait here and get picked up again. All right. Well, we're getting pretty close. Coming around the, the yeah, big well, sweeping Yeah, well, another right part of this update, I can see you on the map. And I see your name. So I see your that icon. Is you know. You know where I am. And I know exactly where you are. I can see your arrow getting closer. It's, it's actually really cool. Oh, now I can hear you. Okay, well. Yeah, no, crossing. Did you hit a crossing? Is no, I was just calling the station stop. Yeah, you're not on my set? train, but, you know, anytime you approach a timetabled station location on the grand, or in this case, on the crap, you're supposed to blow one long whistle to ask your conductor or brakeman, what are we doing here? And then two is we're going to run through, and three is we're going to stop. And seeing as we're going to the lumber camp to pick up some cordwood, I blew two saying, no, we're not stopping. I'm going to pick you up on the fly, and we're going to keep running. How far away from the station would you have to be for that, though? Like, what's what's considered... On the Rio Grande, they had actual, like, station signs that were out there for the location where you'd make that call. Gotcha. And they were usually placed in such a place, like, it was straight track, or you had visibility back, because obviously you need to be able to look back and see your conductor. Um, and so they had those signs out so you knew what to do, but, you know, usually they're maybe a mile out, mile and a half, two miles, you know, just if you're a, on the speed. a brakeman, or, let's so you got your brakeman, your engineer, your conductor, right? And if you're yep. a brakeman on the crew, are you also, like, should you also have the train schedule for the day memorized, or is, like, are you really just zero responsibility, just you're stopping when people tell you to stop? Uh, you may not need to have it memorized, but you definitely want to be briefed and understand what we're planning on doing because you got to know in advance when you're going to stop because, you know, you may not be able to shout over all the cars. I mean, so. I guess I guess the more important question, you know as a brakeman when you're going to be tying brakes throughout the whole route without someone having to give you specific instruction or do you literally just wait? Precisely. Specific, you, Precisely. you already know. For, for every member of the train crew, knowing the territory and the railroad you're going to run over is critically important. Uh, at, to such a point that it is really heavily regulated at this point because a lot of accidents have happened because the engineer wasn't familiar with the route or the conductor wasn't familiar with the route, something, and then, you know, oh, surprise curve, and then they fall off. Uh, <laughs> like happened up in Seattle in 2017 on the, the chunk of railroad that uh, I used to work for, actually. Okay, but so I know, anyway. you're, I know you're a mechanical engineer in real life, right? But yes, for me, like, and, and this is just my impression, I've never worked on a train, so I might be completely wrong, so... But to me, right, 
like I worked in factories, right? Automotive factories. And to me, the conductor seems like management that you don't want to have to deal with. That's just, that, that always, I always just get that impression whenever you talk about conductors, that they're just like the manager that's always like looking over your shoulder and making sure you're putting the bolt in the right spot on the car. You know what I mean? Like that's... Right. It's it's not quite that bad. Usually there's a little bit more camaraderie between the engineer and the fireman and the conductor and everything. Uh, but definitely some conductors could be pretty particular and be very particular about scheduling and the time of the train and everything. So there definitely is a little aspect to that. But because um, at the end of the day, it's the conductor's train. But right. uh, the, the biggest trope is like, well, it's your train, but it's my engine as the engineer. And then they butt heads and stuff. And all so that then they just stuff. disconnect the train and the one the one engine goes the one way and the train goes the other. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to leave you in the desert to die, sir. Yeah, everyone <laughs> part ways. And... I, had a, I had another uh, thought, too, the other day when we were talking about this. Um, I know you're running the Polar Express, um, mm-hmm. which is cool. Uh, you know, that's exciting stuff. But I was thinking about something because the boiler is is uh, hot, obviously, and then yes. it's insulated. Um, yes. And the insulation protects the, you know, the, the hot water from killing people. But Important. what do they do yep. about tenders freezing in the winter? Because wouldn't your oh, this tender... Is a, this is a good question that a lot of people have asked. Like, it, it would it's... free... Even if you put insulation on it, it wouldn't matter. Eventually, the insulation... If you had the thickest insulation in the world, eventually, being outside... It would come to it would cool down, you know, and it yeah. would... Yeah. So how do you deal with that? You're, you're just pump hot water into the tender or something, or...? Uh, hot water by steam, actually. Some tenders actually had tank heaters, particularly in an oil burner, where they would actually heat the oil and also the water if need be. Right, but you in just have our a burner case, in the tank and it, you know, takes some of the oil. It's just and... a steam line that either dumps in or it uh, it has a coil that actually exchanges heat with everything going on in the tender. That's more common for specifically the oil bunker, though. For the, tend, uh, the tender tank itself, you can close the overflow pipe in the injector and when you start to prime the injector, it can't run out the overflow, so it backfeeds down the suction line from the tender. And so you can send steam from the injector into the tender, and you can prevent the water from freezing that way. And that's literally what they would do. Like just, just, just literally what they do, blow the injector back in the tank. Yeah. So every every steam engine, you didn't have to have like a retrofitted steam engine for this. Any steam engine with an injector could just backfeed it and boom, done, problem solved. Correct, yeah. And so what happens if your engine, engine is stored that. outside and the tank's frozen like because you left it for two days? So you're just, you're just <laughs> that's it? Game well, over? Well, so I mean, you, you wouldn't just leave leave the engine completely unattended yeah, outside for a couple days. If it was uh, cold out. You'd, if it was cold out, right? I mean, you'd, if you had to, you would, you'd be at a shop or something, and or nearby a shop, and you'd tend to drain the tender tank rather than leave it sit. If you had to have it sit for and a bit, and it has drain drain lines on it, like you can just open up and let the water. Oh, pour you out. just unhook the hoses between the engine and the tender. Oh, it just pours <laughs> just out. It, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, that would that would yeah. Yeah, so you just winterize it. You just drain it if it had to sit outside for a long time. Either that, or you find a way to heat it up, right? I mean, at the end of the day, everyone knows how to to break ice or remove ice, apply heat or apply hammer. Right. So. <laughs> and modern solutions, you guys, same thing. You don't have a modern solution for this. You don't put electric heaters in your tenders. Oh god, no, no. We just blow the injector back if we need to, and usually. The injector blows back a little bit because no valve seat is perfect except for the first time you fire things up and everything's happy and wonderful and shiny. Uh, So usually the injectors leak back into the tank a little bit anyways. You'll actually hear it when you're sitting on the engine of a a little bit more worn in engine where the uh, the tanks will kind of tick the uh, or the tank. Uh, hoses between the engine and tender will tick as you know they'll heat up and contract and everything and that usually keeps the tender just all set up and so when you guys are like um when you're filling like you guys obviously have a round table at your shop so you can park them inside a roundhouse and you know boom done you can you know you're good to go um but when you're filling them with water in the winter you have a water tower which is insulated, but I'm assuming that gets frozen too then, right? That so, has a tank heater built oh, into it. Oh, it does have it, a yeah. tank heater, like mm-hmm. just an electric, okay. Yes, just an electric heat exchanger. And a lot of tanks on the railroad, you know, as electricity became a thing, definitely had tank heaters and everything in them to keep them going that way because otherwise you can't get water. electricity, what? They just had a metal bottom and a guy lighting a fire below it? Like, is it... 
you know, I'm not actually 100% certain in that era, so I'm going to let my commenters who know a lot more about the, the like details they must have. Of really that, that's the only solution they would have had, right? Some guy lights a fire. I mean, obviously, in I'm sure climates. it was a, an MOW type task or yeah. maintenance away who's responsible for the track. They have a structures department as well, and I'm sure whoever is in charge of the structures would have to go out on the hand car or later the Fairmont speeders, the little gas engine speeders that go terrifyingly fast. Um, and zip to each You're good. water tower location, pulling ahead. Uh, and then they would inspect the tower and do what they need to do to make sure that the, the tower's got free water in it, which very likely meant uh, lighting a fire or something like that. Yeah, it's just interesting. I mean, you know, I live in Canada, obviously. We had... Uh, uh, it's cold up there, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, it's it's cold. We've had some snow for a bit. We had, like, freezing rain the other day, and that's what I was... Like, we had, like, an inch of freezing rain or whatever. So everything gets coated in this layer of ice, right? Oh, and I, <laughs> That's when I was thinking about it. I'm like, holy cow, the tender would freeze. And I was like, how would they... Like, there's no way they wouldn't... You know, you, you, you can't avoid, you know cold air making your tender precisely <laughs> and no amount of insulation is going to change that for us all. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway that was, it was well, one neat thing um, question yeah one neat thing on modern locomotives on diesel locomotives is how they deal with it too because a well, diesel locomotive water, takes what, why would they like diesel doesn't they, they freeze. have water they what? have water that's for their what? coolant they don't use any freeze they use coolant they use, they just use straight water. water in the in the radi in the rads i'm, I'm assuming yeah, straight water in the radiator uh, a lot of people will add a borate like treatment and chemical to it as well um which is what bnsf the railroad i used to work for why did. would they use straight water when modern refrigerant chemicals are better heat exchangers hundreds and hundreds of gallons you know how expensive it is to put like 600 gallons of water which is, you know, several thousand liters of water into an engine and then multiply it by the 8,500 locomotives you own. Right. It, that much antifreeze would be extremely expensive and water's plentiful and everywhere. And so they use water and the way that they get around the problem is they have a special valve called a guru valve put in and it's just a simple temperature operated valve. If it gets below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, which is probably, I don't know, two or three degrees Celsius-ish, um, getting close to freezing, right? If you get below that, the valve pops open and it drains all the water out of the locomotive. You're good. And that, pro that uh, always provided an interesting experience uh, up in Seattle because it was decently cold at our diesel shop, but uh, we didn't have it as bad as Northtown did in Minneapolis where it's really cold. And um, the guys... Yeah, well, sorry, Canada continue, cold. continue. Yeah, no, I was just... Yeah, the uh, guys would... Yeah. Uh, they would basically stick a penny in the valve because the the valve stem stuck out a little bit just far enough that you could stick an american penny in between the edge of the valve stem and the body and it would hold it open and so or hold it shut rather and so they would stick the penny in after they finished filling the engine with water in the shop get it up and go you know take it outside and fire it up right away make sure that it doesn't dump, dump the water everywhere you know make sure the penny didn't fall out or something and then that's crazy it to me was, that uh, modern diesels are still using water cool i mean it makes sense right. when you talk about the fluid the, the amount of fluid but it's just it's you know with all the modern refrigerants like water is a great conductor it's a great store of heat you know and all that but like there are much better materials out there now much better right. liquids it's out there. definitely not the most ideal thing but no when you there's realize a reason the, like your house doesn't problem, use yeah. water for example right like yeah. Well, and I know with a car, with a modern car, you can, if you're low on rad fluid and you need an absolute emergency, like, like don't do this unless you absolutely have, you can use distilled water in the, or really any fluid in the rad, but I mean, ideally distilled water and it will still function and act as a coolant and your car will still, you know, accept that. But obviously in, in yeah. colder climates, it makes sure you've freeze. got antifreeze. <laughs> yeah. I had to do a flush on my GTO a couple months back because I was having some issues with the radiator and it turns out that the brand new thermostat that I bought was just bad. Nice. So, shocker. Yeah. So I ended up, uh, you know, flushing things out because I was worried I had something clogged. But yeah, you drive around with distilled water in the car for a little bit and then you put antifreeze back in it. Yeah, it's not too big a deal. I had to, I had to, on my car, I noticed the rad level was going down. Then I was like, I don't understand why the rad flu level is going down. So I had them pressurized the rad system so they adjusted they went through all the hose clamps and clamped them all and then they they basically put like 20 psi of pressure into the system and they cap it and they see where like how much the pressure drops and that tells them if there's a leak somewhere the squeeze yeah yeah we, we do that sort of thing on the steam engines 
Very anyway, frequently for maintenance, actually. Yeah. yeah, so anyway, there was no leak, but, you know, somehow I lost rad fluid. I mean, they probably tightened a clamp that was leaking, and then it stopped, probably. You know, it stopped yeah. leaking. Because they're all just little, like, terrible hose clamps. There's nothing really to it, so. Right, right. Well, yeah, always have rad fluid in your car. Bad news when stuff overheats in hot engines. What a surprise. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> shocker. No, I remember... Uh, I didn't realize the extreme importance of making sure there's no air in the system and, and getting a good prime on the system and make sure that it's, you know, totally water yeah. pumps, or, or steam space. don't pump air. What a shocker. Yeah, it uh, turns out, yeah, two-phase flow doesn't work. Doesn't you work, can't have ever. have gas uh, and liquid, yeah, right? Yeah, one is compressible, one isn't. Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, the and compressible one's watching, watching the temp gauge on the GTO when I was doing the first test drive after flushing the radiator, and watching it hit the air pocket and watching the temp gauge go from like 160 to like 300 and just like an instant was just like <gasps> yeah <laughs> you look down and it's like wait that's that's really hot. okay we're, we're done we're done we're gonna turn the engine off now <laughs> um wait up for me i'm gonna take betsy and go to like go to the smelter with you oh okay because um, i feel like we can leave betsy at the smelter for now Okay. Um, cause we New really... assignment. Congrats, Betsy. Yeah, well, Betsy... Oh, God, God no wood. We're going to have to put a log station at the we, smelter. We need some, uh, we need some firewood figured yeah, out. Yeah, I'll put a log station at the smelter for Betsy. But anyway, my thought is if we leave Betsy at the smelter, right, Um, we can just drop off the cordwood, and then one of us can keep going to the iron mine and then get help from the helper engine to get up there. Uh, and gotcha. the other person can drop, like, actually unload the cordwood using Betsy. You know what I mean? Like, we do some real, some real oh, smelter smart. stuff. Do some, do some real switching. Yeah, I yeah. like that idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna beat you to the sawmill or not. I can see you going down. You look like you're much I closer am... than I am. So come into the small sawmill decently. Um, I'm actually looking up in my rule book to see what the whistle command is because we never use it at the museum because we never have a meet. But we can use the appropriate. Hey, I'm approaching the meeting point whistle signal to the one thing i like about these these telegraph offices is it really allows you to do stuff like this a lot easier uh like just jump back yeah. grab a different you're engine just now over there and you can do that yeah and, and i can <clears> use <throat> you in places maybe and... when my game crashes 15 times in a row i'll just be able to teleport instead of just, running across did it just the crash? iron did it, just, okay. it did not it did okay. not you, you made a noise like it crashed i was concerned well for uh, i'm just still frustrated at the last step or not the last episode this that was now oh i don't know Two episodes ago it's well fun. i have i have a problem is i have an episode 10.5 now so like you I, do yeah, you it's, do it's, yeah it ruined the flow so now i'm i don't know what episode we're on anymore i just it, sort it's of, confusing yeah yeah i just keep we, playing uh, with trains for the, for the viewers we film these decently ahead in advance because uh i've got lots of real train stuff to do and it takes a lot of time and i don't have the luxury of uh just doing youtube like con does yet so <laughs> uh, it can yeah. be it can be difficult to uh, make things happen. Luxury, he says. Luxury, luxury, pain, pain in uh, existence. Yeah. Lu okay, I've got my whistle signal. Why is my up. whistle so pathetic? Why is my whistle <laughs> capped at eighteen percent when I pull it? Oh, because you don't have any boiler pressure, friend. I don't have any boiler pressure. <laughs> well, now that is exciting. That would indeed do it. I am All coming right, in so with no long, boiler long pressure. Short. Long, long well, short. Long, long short. You is wouldn't hear me anyway. I have no boiler you. pressure. I, I'm no, going down in reverse, fine. but it doesn't matter. Because we're going to get to the smelter anyway. Where are. You're ahead of me, I think. I need yes, to like, but oh, I'm realizing I, I need to throw the switch at this Y, and I've got six cars of cordwood shoving me. Yeah, well, you're not gonna stop. We are actually. No, no. We are actually <laughs> going on a head on <laughs> collision right now. No, okay, well. Oh, uh -huh. well, uh, you can throw switches underneath trains now, and uh, I'm peeing in a cup. Did you derail the Montez train? Montezuma is uh, oh, um, slightly oh, no my. longer parallel, you know, oh, to the surface God. that is the world. Um, but she is trying to run backwards now. That's fine. Oh, no. Heist, we haven't gotten through a single episode without you peeing in a cup. I'm just... I'm just... Uh, without anyone peeing in a cup, actually. I don't think we've had a clean episode yet. Well, yeah. a, la a couple episodes ago, <laughs> one of these episodes in the last few episodes, I did not derail a single train. There was That's a... true. Actually, I think it was the, the last one. There was um, an episode where that did not happen. Or two episodes ago, yeah, so... with, the, with uh, the... um. Yeah, when you were the helper for uh, for Betsy. Yeah, I'm just saying. The way. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, one of us one of us is peeing in a lot of cups and one of us is not. Well, Khan, you remember the name of my last railroad, right? Oh yeah, no, I know. I, I am well aware. <laughs> 
the good the good old E S and D of your reputation, uh, I, I have sir. To, uh, you know, I have I'm, to, uh, I'm so glad you don't have model railroads in your house because I feel like ninety <laughs> percent of it would just be them getting destroyed. You would just somehow it would be the Adams family. Yes, you'd be like <laughs> you'd be Lionel like, I thought track pieces only came in standard curves, and you're like, they did, but I didn't like them, so I made my own, and they just be these like wobbly, wonky nonsense tracks. <laughs> That derail yeah, I, would need, uh, I would need my own HO or SM3 yeah. uh, MOW crew to fix things for me. Yeah, you'd have yeah. literally like, oh my god, you could make the most hilarious if you hand laid each set of track with the ties. Like you don't actually use the standard pieces that come with it. Oh my god, dude. So some some people do that. Uh, they hand lay ties. Eventually, coming up eventually on the channel, I've I've got it filmed. My buddy Norm has an incredible ON3 railroad. Oh, there you are. Oh, and you're going backwards. Okay, bye. Um, He's got an incredible ON3 railroad, which is 1 to 48. Okay. So even the narrow gauge engines, like the little C classes, like the class 70 that we have, are still huge. I mean, they're, you know, a good, like foot long engine and tender, probably bigger than that, actually. And they're really, really impressive because the gauge between the rails is even in ON3, where it's three foot narrow gauge, but O scale, it's like inch and a quarter or inch and a half. So they're pretty big models. How do you set this and up? This has to be outside then, right? Like you don't know. You... This is in his basement, dude. His and I'm so excited to get this, this video massive, out. Like, his whole my... basement is a giant railroad. And I mean, he's really got about as small of a basement as you'd want to do Owen three and because he needs so much space to build it. Cause the curves like how, are so How huge. big is his basement? Do you think? Um, it's probably 600 or 700 square feet. Probably if I had to guess. Okay. So it's a pretty decent size, right? So like right? 20, but, 20 by 30 feet or something like that. Yeah, some, somewhere in that order. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a little bit narrower, so it's probably like 15 by 30 or something. But anyway, um, he hand laid all of his track, every single tie, the rail individually spiked by hand like it's the real thing. He That's doesn't crazy. have spikes in every single tie because you don't need to with that stuff. But he, do, he laid everything in the switches. He hand built each of the switches. Uh, it's incredible, and I'm, I'm excited to get that video out, but I have another Model Railroad video to get out in front of that, and I'm, like, 20 real-life videos deep to edit, so... <laughs> yeah, welcome. Got uh, plenty of stuff to get through uh, in the coming months. Betsy's in the complete wrong direction for all this, but anyway, it doesn't really it's, matter. It's fine. It's, it's basically fine. a symmetrical engine, like, 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 let's be real, it's... It's fine. It and then, yeah, uh, it doesn't care about reverse or forward, so... Cool thing is, if you keep heading on to the coal mine, I will teleport to the helper station when you get there. To, oh, dude. To boot this up. This is next level. This is this and is then, actually such a good quality of life thing. I didn't even realize it was going to be this impactful. Yeah, well, I put a I put a telegram station, telegraph station at the at the, at the helper, helper station. Yeah, yeah. The helper station. So we can just warp there and then pick you up and keep going and then come back and finish whatever needs to be done at the smelter. Uh, while we're here, well, like while I'm here, I might throw down an engine shed off that turntable as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Just I'll just try and keep Betsy you. I mean, here. I I could keep you updated, or you could look at the map and know exactly where I am. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I could see how but close we'll you just, get. To we'll just we'll just communicate and kind of see where we're at. And if you got time to slap down a, an, an engine house, that'd be sweet. I I'm feel like it's done. only a, a matter of a few minutes or like a few updates before we end up seeing actual track lines on the map. I feel like I feel like we're getting close there. You know, we got player names and stuff. I would love to see that. I Just would really like to see that. The there used to be the website Miniswerg. Yeah, could I remember that. that. But, you could upload your maps and it would. Put, but it, yeah, it's it no longer. I think Railroad Studio does that function now, so you still can do that. Um, I'm pretty sure. Uh, someone in the comments, actually, probably someone. I mean, fifteen thousand people in the comments ah, will probably ah, correct me. Go, hi, Betsy, hi. your little driver. I'm breaking as hard as I can. <laughs> Go! <laughs> it's just like, wait, he's 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 not accelerating. I, I wasn't on the reg yeah. for a bit there. It's it's fine. Life's hard. Um, but I, th I think those tools are out there. But having that integrated into the game is going to be so nice. Yeah, it would be just great. the the quality of life. I mean, it's the little things. We all we all get excited about new engines and and new content like that. But the little quality of life stuff and the features like that. I mean, I had no idea this was going to be this impactful, and it and it's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of useful. It is It is useful to have them at all the industries you connect up to. And like, you know, if we have a big switch hub somewhere in the middle of nowhere, just throw a telegram station or telegram. I keep calling them telegrams. It's stupid <laughs> horsemen. The but they, they, no, like, if we have a, a big shunt yard like in the middle of nowhere for whatever reason, you just throw a telegraph station there and you could, you know, show up, grab your stuff and 
leave, right? Right, exactly. So it's kind of convenient. Right, I'm letting my train coast, so if it hits you, it's its fault, not mine. But yeah, no, that's that's how so that would that's, work. That's how that works. Well, you gotta yeah. disconnect your back ones. Oh, you yeah, are doing that. Yeah, that. that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, okay, gotcha. They, they're braked and back on my engine. And well, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna throw this switch in. and then throw it back. Right, yeah. So that you can just oh, I, drive I, on I missed, out. I missed the platforming experience and I fell between the first two cars. Oh, perfect. And I probably would have been run over by the train, but it's fine. Oh no, I jumped off my train and I had to move 33 cars and I had it at full <laughs> throttle. Oh no, I couldn't get back on. It was 33 cars and I had it in notch 8. And notch power. 8. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't minute. tie the brakes. We, did, oh. we didn't watch that movie the other night in Discord. That didn't happen. I don't see you at all, actually. Are you in the driving? You? Oh my god, you just appeared. You've just spawned into space. Now you don't see Betsy's Betsy. gone on my end. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. That was a weird The new decent. render distance. It's not 500 meters. It's, it's like 50 meters. It's 5 meters. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, you want to pull the pin and yeah, I'll, no, I'll pull get... ahead? Yeah, I'll, I'll pull the pin. Sure, sure. Per uh, nope, apparently I won't. Okay, hold on. There we go. You're good. You're disconnected, okay. sir. Bye. Bye. I'll throw this switch for you, too. Oh, cool. That'd be lovely. See? See how efficient this is? This is yard operations 101. See, man, this is the whole point for that head shunt. It's a neat All right, there thing. we go. And now Although, I, I was very critical of you in a couple episodes back, and I said that it's not shunting, it's switching. And someone corrected me that, yes, the American term for a head shunt is a drill track, which I think I mentioned once, but it's definitely a, a more common feature in British railroading. There goes my game. Yep, bye. Montezuma is just going at full reg uh, now. Might, might want to go catch that. <laughs> Okay. I mean, there's a, there is a handbrake tied on those coal hoppers, and they're pretty yeah, heavy, so it'll I, probably it's remember, probably fine. Remember how you were like, I had it notch eight. Yeah, that's what that's what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it was zero cars. It was I had zero it notch eight full power. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. yeah, it's gonna it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit. Whether or not it derails is gonna be the question. No, it looks like it's. Oh, it plowed through one. Oh, it just it knocked one completely off the track. It's well, gonna I am sad two. that uh, that I did not get to witness this. Yeah, it, moment, one is but... completely upside down, and it is gaining speed with the other two. We have an oh, actual. Oh god, it was the first break. It actually is not enough braking power. It is pick. It is back up to full speed. Oh my you god! Need I to can't... go in the telegraph house, or you just click. You just press M and then click. Oh on my the... god! Look at that. That's. Yeah. Oh, and then you. Okay, that's. And neat. Then you come out from the. So, uh, you uh, might... the... can you run to the How hill the... and grab it? Can you grab it? Um. Yeah, hopefully. I, I I came to the smelter. Maybe I should go to the sawmill. <laughs> Actually, you have to pick up this extra coal car that we have the smelter anyway. The fourth one. Oh, I one. see it. I see it. Yeah, Zuma, Zuma is zooming. Yeah, it's it picked up speed. It didn't care. I'm gonna keep pushing in these cordwood cars. You have to come in here anyway. I we we totally miscalculated. We forgot we had an extra smelter car here. Right, extra. right. Uh, okay, I am I'm on the Zuma. I'm gonna right. tie some brakes. Yeah, that was exciting. Or tie a break. That was that was an adventure. That's um. That's fine. Well, look at that! My uh, my cars are re-railed, and uh, oh I'm yeah, no, the, on the, the magical here. the magical ghost elf um, thing. Same one yeah. that pulls the throttle. Yeah. Yeah. No. Anyway, uh, I put a firewood depot here. Uh, you can divert onto the track you're on now and pick up your last hopper, and then get out of yep. here before you cause more problems. Yeah, that's probably wise. Yeah, I'm gonna just uh, I put a firewood depot here because obviously Betsy needs firewood, and it kind of makes sense to have a firewood depot here because if we do have a smelter engine that doesn't ever leave like eventually another 060 yeah. uh we should probably yeah, have a uh, thing that's pretty smart and then i'm gonna put a water tower here as well i don't think this would need sand necessarily no we got sand at the helper station that's all yeah and use. sand at the freight depot and like i don't feel like any of these engines would need sand up two percent because that would just no. be no, that would just be ridiculous fine. is this is this in a good spot is that Let's be back more. I hate the fact that you can't snap a water tower to rail. It would be a really easy snap to do, I think, and that would be really nice. So just because the spacing, the spacing of it, you know what I mean? Like I have to always. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I'm pretty sure even if it's over a little bit, it'll still you know line up no problem. The but... spout's got enough travel to really make yeah, a difference. Yeah, you could make the adjustment. It would but... be an easy, easy uh, snap to snap. Same track with the sanding and... house. It would be a nice snap. All right, you just uh, yeah, you just grab that. Grab your firewood depot here. I'm gonna build another switch off line just to get to the firewood depot so we could load up the firewood depot because right, right. if we, you know, 
once this actually runs out of firewood, we'd have to load up the other side with cordwood or something. Resupply it. Yeah. yeah. And remember you know, the we days gotta of the play game where you soft locked if you ran out of firewood? Anyone? Anyone been playing Railroads Online that long? Just me? No, because the <laughs> oh oh back in the beginning, yeah, I remember back that back in the day. Yeah, now it's I was there three thousand years ago. Yeah, well, he and originally the firewood depot would spawned empty, right? So that was the issue. Now yeah, you can just, the you whole just thing. place down a new firewood depot. Really, you never actually have to resupply a firewood depot, but you know, right? All right, Montezuma versus the six and a quarter percent great. I mean, you're not I gonna wonder. you're not gonna do it with four hoppers. I don't think with four hoppers empty. No, no, actually, yeah, we proved this, didn't we? No, you won't even do it with yeah. one caboose empty, bro. Let alone four hoppers. Like, are you... <laughs> hey, Betsy, Betsy did one empty and the caboose by herself, so we. But can Betsy's believe. got like way better tractive effort, like not actually, but like I feel like Betsy, like I don't know what the word is feels like it has better tractive effort you know what i mean like it's just right then montezuma montezuma, then montezuma doesn't feel like it has it yeah, yeah i can dig that montezuma feels like it's gonna die at every corner and betsy's just like yo you want me to go where oh okay with what sure okay, no problem sure sold that's fine yeah we'll we'll get right <laughs> on that all right well i got this set up so that's good um i gotta turn betsy around uh so let's just let's just uh betsy should be in reverse i don't really feel like using the turntable so i just i i grabbed the boys and we just picked up betsy um you know one guy at each corner yeah the, uh, just... the 050 came down from space and grabbed it the giant hand from god how just, so how heavy it. would betsy actually be do you know like a porter i don't actually know off the top of my head how much the class b is supposed to weigh but i would bet it's probably on the order of like 10 or 15 tons if that okay so like me and the boys aren't gonna be just grabbing it actually it's probably it's probably less than that i was trying to mentally compare it to our gas mechanical that we have that's eight tons but that thing's got a way bigger frame than betsy it might not even be 10 tons okay so there is a chance that me and the boys could potentially just lift it up and the uh it. Yeah. the game lists it as just under sixteen thousand pounds so eight tons yeah yeah so like uh, me and my me and my 15 other friends we'll just grab it and no problem we'll be good to go got it thousand pounds lift, each uh, that's you know man well, it is such a small engine to weigh that much that's fine yeah, frames, uh, I mean, usually like three, four inch thick steel. Um, I'm at the helper depot now. Are I mean, you? I can, okay. just, I can just send it and try it and then you could shove on the back, but. Yeah, that seems smart. You know what? I'm I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I did I'll, some I'll, I'll cry train when, when the time comes. Oh, don't How's worry. I'm already here. I warped here. Oh, you're already here? Oh, okay. Oh God, he's gonna do it. I'm gonna, we're gonna send it. You are oh, not. That's you a cute, are that's not a cute going little to telegraph it. office next to the table. I like it. Oh God, you're not. Gonna... I like it that we can like feel. It feels more railroady. There's more buildings. It's not just tracks and trees. I agree. We need maintenance buildings. That's the next big thing. And yeah, right. a, a dude, this thing's not even. This thing's not even fired office. up yet. It's cold. <laughs> it is cold, cold, cold. Well, cold we might cold. have to beer it back if I stall. Yeah, and we'll see. <laughs> well, I'm gonna fire it up and get it out there. Um... Let's go, goat. And the goat. Dude, this thing's a monster. It's great. I learned from one of my commenters after posting the video where we got the goat that the Rear Grand Southern, which was the jank, sad railroad of sadness, southwestern Colorado, they named their first yard goat that they bought from the DNRG. They named it the goat. Oh, really? So there was historical precedence for us to have the goat. I also got uh, a, I got a ton of comments. I noticed you did as well, because uh, I creep your comment section because I'm that guy. Well, you know. Um, but I got I uh, noticed that because we numbered our engines one one. Oh wow, you made it the far. The Fibonacci dude. sequence. Yes, dude. we have yes, the Fibonacci. I love that idea. The rest of the engine. So the next one's got to be three. Yeah, engine and then three, five, and then, and then you yeah. know eight, so on and so forth, and eight and you know Fibonacci okay. is adding Re the two refresh. previous numbers. Okay, I was gonna say I don't I don't remember Fibonacci one, one, exactly. One, one, two, off the top of my head. three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. What's it oh, after word. that? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Yeah. And then math is hard. Yeah. yeah no, you know? dude, I became an 45, engineer 55? so that I wouldn't have to do math in my head. Fifty-five, eighty-nine. So. Uh, then Com's what? Just showing off now. No, 140. To we're going to get up sir. to like, we're going to be at like engine 200 something in no time. Like that's pretty the thing. quick. Yeah. Right, well, no, be fun. Back up. Well, I'm not shoving you. Are you kidding me? We're not shoving this. This is, excuse me. 
I'm gonna there's, I'm gonna go in that telegram office. Cars. I'm gonna go in that telegram office right now, and I'm gonna tell management what you're doing. I'm gonna, <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell them. <laughs> he wants me to shove through on these on these. I mean, we are not. You know how quickly we are gonna just push fine. everything off the rail if we shove. Like you. Oh oh yeah, we would string line or anti string line or something very. Easily, I will get yeah. in that office. I will call mom and I will tell her that you are not don't, playing. Don't tell mom. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Gotta get the switch. Gotta get the switch. It's fine. Did you get it? I did. Okay, perfect. All right, full speed. Oh, can't see All anything right. because the engine house is in the way. That's fine. That's fine. No big deal. It's not like it's not like people are watching this or anything and need to get a camera angle at all. Right. It's fine. I try oh and like God. be minimal with my camera movements because I know you know how shaky that gets when you're you know in in bit rate later on and all that. So I'm always trying to be gradual and stuff with the camera movements. And then sometimes in the video I'll be editing and I'll just be like, oh, there I just had a seizure randomly and the right. camera went everywhere. And... I, I always feel bad because I get comments here and there that people talk about how like my camera moves too much and I get the motion sick. I'm just like. I have this tick from when I, like, I didn't professionally, but I did play FPS games competitively many moons ago. Um, and so, it, you know, a lot of Twitch shooters, like I, I played Team Fortress 2 for Guys, a long FPS, time. Guys, it was FPS in quotes, also known as TF2. Also known as TF2, yes. Uh, so. <laughs> which, of, of all the competitive shooters out there, which uh, really wasn't one, but I mean, it was a lot of fun. That was the most fun I've had playing video games. Very intense. But my Bro, camera this is the most is fun you've to... had playing video games. This well, right no, here. Well, well, this is, I mean, that's actually pretty true because I'm, I'm a trade nerd and uh, I'm not going to hide that. So. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> you know, at least if you're on a date with somebody, you got to pretend it's like the most fun date of your life, even if it's not, okay? That's what this is right now. I don't think you understand. I, I, oh. Con Connor, are we on a date? Do you need to tell me well, something? You know, like a YouTube date, right? Like it's, you know, it's. Oh, okay. Like, a, a you date. Got it. Yeah, I don't know. We'll start a new website, bro. It'll be for YouTubers looking to connect with other YouTubers to make videos. <laughs> there are 300 Thumb YouTubers on the internet in your area. Like it's. <laughs> I'm looking for a vlogger to make other vlogs in my town. Oh, perfect. App done. Yeah. Come, come vlog. Yeah, dude, why, why haven't we done this yet? Honestly, multi-million dollar idea. Genius idea. Yeah. Genius idea. And we'll take, take like 5% million. of everything they make. That's that will, will so work for a cause. We're actually doing this no problem. That's great. Yeah, it's it's a lot nicer than uh, just struggling with the Montezuma. I do yeah. have to say, uh, speaking of YouTube comments, a lot of people said right after I said, yeah, usually they'd put the bigger engine in back and the smaller engine in front. We proceeded to do this, and we've done it again. Um, and, I mean, they're close enough in size that it doesn't really but, matter. Yeah, but you were saying it's only if the bigger engine is going to pull through the smaller engine. Like, if it's going to literally rip the smaller engine in half. Right. Like, if it's going to be that much of an issue, like, like doing 491, our big, big engine at the museum that runs, and, like, 346 or 20 with <laughs> them behind... That's a mistake, but Montezuma and the goat, I mean, they're, they're so close that it's, it's not that bad. Right. Wow, listen to that, did you hear that? It was like synchronous chugging for a second there. That was, that was funny. The, the chugs, they, they get a little weird on the client side as the, the popcorning happens. Like sometimes the wheels will spit, like speed up and desync and right. things. But it, it is really fun when you've got two engines of different driver diameter with both with the same number of pistons, because some engines did have three cylinders. Um, it's really fun to have them working together, because if they're pretty close, it'll sound like they're working together, and then all of a sudden they'll just go completely out of sync, and then the exhaust beats go all over the place, and they walk back in and out. It's, uh, it's a pretty neat little phenomena that you get to experience when you're double-heading engines. Alrighty, right when we get off this hill, you can see the slope very quickly, gradually mm -hmm. um, smoothed out. So I will cut my reg. You should disconnect. Okay. Um, yeah. And then that way you can keep going. Later. We are. Are we lined for a bypass line? We're not. You need to line us for a bypass line. We're uh, not. Right. Break. Uh, oh no, it's we fine. are. We are. We are. Yeah. No, we're lined no, for. No, we're not. We're almost lined that all first, the way lined. Almost. Not quite. The f that last switch isn't quite right. Yeah. Are you going to beat it? I'm hoping. Oh, God. Also, I'm going in the siding. Okay, wow. got okay, it. Perfect. That was, like, perfectly timed. All right, so the I come up behind you now. Speed. Yeah. 
which is just we still have the cordwood to unload at the smelter, by the way, with Betsy. But let's. Oh right, right. So I'm gonna just back down the hill and go into the the, uh, the shed. Okay. And then you load the cars up, and then I can teleport back up and uh, put us back together here. Oh, okay, okay. No, um, it's fine. It's still fine. It's still fine. What? How would okay. It Okay, I was inside the boiler reel briefly, and I thought oh, I was going to get oh, left behind, gotcha. but okay. uh, no, I made I, it in. I see the train I'm going the by UI. empty with nobody in it, so it's just I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm safe now. I'm good now. It was, sure uh, was there was almost there. yet yet again, uh, Colin. It was 30, 30 something cars, right. and uh, yeah, you've been doing I left that a lot lately. Shape. All right, so I got this. Uh, the coal cars there, iron cars, whatever, hopper cars, no big deal. Uh, I'm going to go turn Montezuma around on the table. Um, cause that's gotta happen. We can go down. Yep, and you get on the other end. Forward and get on the other end. And do then the, back the Do in. the con iron loading trick, Teehee. Uh, no, I'm not gonna yeet you off the mountain. You're already... No, not not that one. Oh, oh, well, there's a different the one? The iron loading trick. The speed load. Oh, the speed loading? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's meta for sure. That is, that yeah. is the meta. Yeah. The speed load. I wish there was a firewood car. Because that that's really what the railroad would have done. True. When we went uh, to the Coombe Race in Toltec with the RGS-20 from the museum, they had this big event called the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup about uh, maybe a year and a quarter, year and a half ago, something like that. And they brought these wood-burning engines to 64-mile-long Coombe Race in Toltec. It's got all these big grades and, and hills and everything. Um, and so the way that they prepared for it was they staged gondolas and flat cars and things all across the railroad at various sidings and they had them chock full of firewood and they would supply them with firewood so rather than needing to okay well bring a you know an armful a handful or you know even like a, a pickup truck full or something of wood they could put a couple cords of wood onto an actual flat you know and then park that wherever they were going to need to load and oh man those things it was amazing uh, I, I got to ride on one of the charters behind them uh, and I watched those engines run. They're beautiful engines. The, the real Glenbrook and the real Eureka, actually, from the game were the two wood burners that were there. And it's like the amount of wood that they had to load every time. Like, we would go five miles, and there was the siding, and there was a car full of wood, and then the army of men came out from the caboose, and then they slung wood up into the tender, you know, bucket brigade style. And I mean, it was like they probably had to refill the tender almost entirely every single time after going such a small amount of distance. So, yeah, wood burners are uh, kind of insane. They do not have uh, the potential energy. They do not have the BTU density of no, the coal. No, in the wood. That's very true. We are going to need brakemen on this, 100%. Yeah, this is going to shove Montezuma this and show Montezuma what's hard. up. Six Dunk. and a half percent. Go. This is going to be like three hundred thousand pounds at least. <laughs> it's going to be fine. It'll it's going to. It's going to be. Yeah. It's going to be. Pushy. Montezuma's just going to learn. Uh, learn some nasty words, and it's going to be. And fine. then we have we have a one percent climb up that little bridge that we have to do, right? So that's. Um, yeah. <laughs> we should be fine. I feel like we'll have speed enough for that. Like it's gradual enough. We're just gonna be full regging it anyway. But... Yeah, sh it's short enough. I don't think the whole train gets on it even. Like that's no, how it's, short yeah, that it's is, true. So. It, it might not be all of it. So we'll be yeah, good, Zuma's though. got thirty six hundred and fifty pounds of tractive effort. I need to do. Um, people have been asking how to calculate tractive effort and how you calculate things about resistance and how many pounds the cars can pull. And I, I need to do a video about that still. Uh, it's definitely one to add, and it's really helpful for the game because. Actually, do the math. All right, go, subtractive okay, effort is the amount of force at the wheels. Is that the amount of force the engine's capable of pulling? Yeah, basically at the wheels. I mean, it ends up being the actual force at the coupler. You can bring them back, Con. Okay. Um, so 37,000 pounds for the K37, our big engine, which you know is uh, 10 Montezumas. That's kind of hilarious. A little bit more than 10 Montezumas. But then, okay, the so then the if you think but... about tractive effort, like that calculation includes the weight of the engine the driver's size and the piston uh, does diameter does not include the weight is just how would it not though because that that would affect the friction capability that of the engine. is the adhesion and and it's a little bit separate tractive effort is literally just the absolute maximum force it can put down but if i assuming have assuming you have the tractive that's, effort, that's assuming, or, assuming you have 100 percent adhesion. adhesion yeah yeah exactly so that's assuming uh, what you put back. That's assuming when you put uh, down power, your wheel never slips, is basically what you're saying. 
Yes, precisely. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I guess we can load the first car first. Yeah, we'll just, That's I don't know what, you said keep coming back, and I thought well, it was... Well, you, you, you were, like, not quite there. You oh, needed, like, I another see. two feet, and then you shoved it another 40. It's fine, that'll do. There you go. Let's okay, just... well, uh, I guess we can show off the uh, the patented con speed load technique. I definitely didn't then... come up with this. I don't remember who told me this. I think it was maybe Dapper or something. Or maybe I'm a comment. You, you're totally screwing it up. Every time a ball spawns, that's you're no, you're below the point. See? You're, yeah. You know, you gotta, there you, you gotta, go. I'm, I'm not there an expert go. on this. Yeah, that that point. Yeah, there you go. When do I have? I don't know how many have loaded. Six. Okay. I fell off the car. It made it a little hard. Okay. All right. Come yeah, on, you gotta shoot. do seven. Seven. You gotta be right where the the gravel turns or the coal turns on right. iron, whatever this material is. There you go. Iron ore. There it goes. Ten. Right, okay. Perfect. Take it ahead and uh, we'll load the rest of this thing. We'll be right back. Honestly, though, making money on the iron ore mine is not the issue. It's it's making money from the iron products. The, the products. That's, yeah. That's the refined where you make stuff the cash. is the, the real answer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So I'll tie brakes for you. I'm going to start with your tender brake. And then... Yeah, that's probably wise. Would they do that on a railroad at Steep Hill? Would they actually use the tender brake as a tender brake? Or would they just kind of like let the cars do most of the braking? And ignore you could definitely the use the tender brake. I mean, it just depends. Um, usually with the air brakes now, I mean, the way that we run, if we have enough train behind us that the weight is enough and we have enough brakes, we like to cut the driver brakes out on the engine because that you have the automatic brake and the independent brake. The automatic brake sets up the cars behind you, but it also sets up through some valve trickery. It sets up the independent brake, which is on the engine and tender as well. Uh, and so you usually have to bail the independent off, which is a fancy way to say, you know, leave it in the release position so that you don't set up the engine and cause the cars to bunch into you because the independent's going to set up first because that's where the, the start of the pipe is, right? So it has to propagate down the train as the reduction in pressure goes back. Right. And so you don't want to do that, but, you know, it can be kind of annoying to deal with. And, and if you've got enough train, the Rio Grande engines have, it's called the mountain cock which is a special valve that cuts out the driver brakes. And so you cut those out, and then when you set up the automatic, you don't have to do anything with the independent because it'll set up the tender just normally behind you like it's a car, and all the cars then proceeding. And so you're not dealing with the sudden massive brake application of the, the weight of the so without, one. So without electronically controlled brake lines, like the electronic servo stuff we talked about with the modern yep. stuff, you're you're always going to have that issue where it propagates from the head engine back through the train. Like, your brakes are always going to apply starting at the front, working their way to the back, right? Correct, like, which is why you always bail off with the engine if you're really trying to be really smooth, yeah. There's nothing you can do about that. It's just you apply them slowly, basically, initially, to so let the pressure, like, not grab the first car right away. So everything's, like, always going to be under a bit of compression then. Yep, you take the first... The first set you take is usually the minimum reduction. And in more modern day control valve setups and more modern air brake setups, they actually have like a dedicated minimum position. And so you go into that position and it sets up like five PSI of reduction on the train across. Um, and then when you come you know, further into it, then you can add however much more you want. But uh, on the old stuff, like we have at the museum, which is uh, still not as old as Montezuma, but getting close. Uh, you basically leave it in the reduction position and you take about a three or four, maybe five pound reduction to make sure all the control valves on the cars understand that they're supposed to set up. And then that's kind of your start. And then from there, you can take little bites and add more as you need to. Uh, you can probably stop chugging. <laughs> oh yeah, we're back on the hill. Yeah, we're just no, dragging we were, really hard back there. So, we were because you know. I, I had, believe it or not, Montezuma cannot even pull a single car with brakes. So I, I, <laughs> I had to go and turn all the brakes off on that one flat section, and then just of course couldn't make the hill a solid six and a half percent. Had to put a flat section in there just to really throw you. So if you have all these right. brakes on, you got to untie them and then retie them. It's perfect. I'm also it's like, operational fun. When when we get a bigger engine, we'll be able to just pull through it and melt the brakes. Yeah, shoes, and just you know, but... melt the brake shoes off the engine and not care. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. I can't actually. actually jump I think these I cars. think in this era that the brake shoes might have actually been wood, so it, we may have actually set them on fire. But you know, on the more modern stuff, it's uh, usually an iron or composite material these days. I actually went to uh, Whiteface Mountain, which is by Lake Placid. Uh, 
and I went there once with my dad, and we went, drove up the mountain, and there's this, like, it's, like, 3,000 meters of elevation you can drive up or something, and then the actual peak is, like, 1,400 or 4,000 or something, right? Whatever. Okay. It's it a matter. pretty big mountain. Yeah. Some, I, th I think, or maybe 2,000. I don't know. Someone will look it up and fact check me. Whatever. Anyway, you can drive a fair amount of height up, and it's a relatively steep road, probably, like, 10%. And I remember coming down the road. I was young at the time, like like you know, 10, 11 years old, something, maybe twelve. I don't know. I don't remember too to start much. Start kicking brakes off there, friend. Yeah, I'm taking them off. Um, but I remember when we were coming down the mountain, the brakes on his car actually caught on fire, which was interesting. Oh my goodness! So we had to stop and let them cool down. Uh, That's then, crazy. You know, because they just it's like you know he had it in a low gear, but you still have to do too much braking, and uh, yeah, right. I guess they just they melted right through the shoes. So yeah, it's it's interesting how little sometimes the uh, with a lot of cars the the engine actually breaks you if you even if you're in low gear um i, I drive manual transmission stick shift like i'm one of the uh four americans that does i think yeah I and now the entire comment well. section will say um, i do too but, yeah i used um, to i used to as well it's 40 every feet, every car so. i've owned has been has been a stick and it's amazing for me uh driving the gto and then my subaru going back and forth between the two the gto you leave it in gear, you get off the gas, and that thing falls on its face. It breaks super hard, which is nice because it's from 1968 and it's got manual drums the rest of the way around, which is just terrifying because, yeah, that's uh, that's safe to stop a big car like that. Anyway, is, is your GTO big block? Uh, there, there is no big block. It, it, it is was... just the block. Pontiac did not have, they didn't have big, big and block? small blocks. Oh, they, okay. they just had one block, and all of the engines were the same. That's that's every uh, every boomer, uh, foamer, not foamer, every boomer forum person, uh, <laughs> that's their favorite trivia. Is so it a big block? It? No, it it's was, just, It was, what, a V8 block. or something? It was a, like... yeah, it's a V8. It's a 400 cubic inch V8, which is about six... Almost 6.6 .6 liters, but the badge says 6.5, so whatever. Right, so so but you know why it it really slams on its face when it slows down? Lots of pistons it's and It's got lots big, of big, big moving, yes. heavy things with lots of compression. Yeah. That's... Yes. Yeah, so it slows real easy versus the Subaru, which is, you know, it's a WRX. Yeah. So it's a, a two liter, uh, <laughs> and it's a little, uh, you know, opposing four right boxer engine Neat yeah stuff, i used to but, drive an inline four yeah. mazda which is just a vertical four and yeah yeah a two liter vertical four and when doesn't, you let off doesn't the do throttle, near just... anything that the uh, the v8 does it's amazing how yeah. much the difference is but you can still smoke a v8 off the line if you know how to shift surprisingly enough that makes a big very difference. true very yeah. true Gotta have, gotta have this technique and the setup and everything. Yeah, I, I haven't driven a standard in a while now. I have an automatic because my wife doesn't drive standard, so you know. It's... Ooh, I see how it is. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's that's one of the dumb hills that I'll die on. Like I well, drove my not, buddy's car in the snow, and yeah, we're not I will even, never drive in the snow not in a standard transmission. We're not even married yet. I say my wife because we've been together for so long. We're engaged, but. Uh, I, I told her, I said, I want to buy a standard again. Like, I want to buy a standard car again and, you know, have a nice little, maybe a nice little two-door summer car that's a standard, you know, just something that stays in the garage in the winter, you know, and only gets run a few times in the winter and then just stays, it comes out in the summer. Um, mm -hmm. My neighbor has one like that. He's got a nice little, he's got a summer car. He's actually got a 90, the 1970s Trans Am. Uh, oh, dude. With the, with the yeah. old T-top, you know, it's, so it's yeah. really cool. Um, yeah, that's the vibe. But anyway, the thing's hilarious because when he, when he, fires it up every spring it rattles the windows of like the house near like my house because it's just like yep. yeah. yeah they're they're loud it's yeah, loud I fire and up the gto and uh every, everyone's aware yeah <laughs> but anyway so my my fi my fiance said I, i'm not allowed to buy a sports car until we get married so that's that's where my life is at currently okay um, so the wedding's tomorrow huh <laughs> yeah the wedding's, the wedding's tomorrow yeah exactly the wedding's tomorrow uh yeah we're gonna have uh gonna get a sports car and uh what it'll be ten dollars? Sports car will be fifty grand. You know, normal, normal things. Yeah, as you do. It's fine. Mm. <laughs> gotta have priorities, right? Yeah, you gotta gotta have it. What was the? There was um, a guy that worked for Disney by the name of World Ward Kimball, who was big into trains and did a lot of the animations and train stuff for Disney. Um, really cool dude, uh, and he's famously quoted as saying, "He who dies with the most toys wins." I believe. <laughs> yeah. 
So whether that be, you know, the, the train stuff, the model trains, the real trains, the, the cars, or what, what have you, I mean... You just have to uh, find a hobby that your wife deals is acceptable. That's, that's the, like, for me, it's, it's, I have, a, like, remote control things, and I, I have a lot of remote control things. I have a whole room in my house dedicated to remote control things where I've, where I've built, like, a track up, right? So it's like, that's an acceptable level of spending, you know, in, in her right. eyes. And that's that's all you got to go for. I can't wait to see the cordwood pile just completely disappear as soon as we unload this yeah. iron. But anyway, yeah, it's um, going to it's just going to go I'm just going to let you stop completely so we don't lose this. I am working on it. I think this is OK. All right, we're good. That's two. That's three. That's going to go in. Perfect. All right, you're good. Taking Move. it ahead easy. I'm going to try and you're... keep this light speed here. You're good. Yeah, only the last car. Perfect. Crap much... railroads, man. man. We are unloading have. balls of crap, it looks like, into <laughs> yeah, our big crap, crap pile. We've All right, got you're good. Uh, balls of crap in our piles of crap, and, you know, it's fine. Yeah, so if you back up now and just park these and then do the old run around trick, I'll start working on the old Betsy unload trick. I might right. as well un pop a save here I'll, in case you... Yeah, I'll unhitch you. Unhitch me and tie a break. Yeah, I'll work on Oh, both. Betsy just teleported. Betsy's on the cordwood now. <laughs> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pop a save just in case the world I decides to I think that's wise. Yeah. I think that's real smart because uh, I think uh, I think my game is not long for this world. Montezuma's in the right direction to go back to the freight depot with the cordwood. Because we're gonna take the cordwood right. first back empty. Right. Um. So, I have to run around with Betsy on the cordwood cars. Right to get Betsy into. You gotta go to the head shunt, right? It's right. So I gotta run around these cars, bring the empties to the head shunt, and then you back out behind the empties, hook up to them, and drive off. Um. Yeah, we could do that, or we could just put the Montezuma on in the in the lanes over here. Right, bring Montezuma up into the headshot and then just back it all out. It's pretty funny how how long these yard operations take now when you actually do stuff. The dunk. Okay, we're good. Right. The uh, the age old saying that I've heard when you're actually doing switching is that every move is 15 minutes at least. Really. So okay, we gotta go go into that siding and grab that car. 15 untie minutes. the brake, everything. It's 15 minutes, and that's that rings pretty true. So you even moving just a handful of cars, even putting around the museum where we don't have that much track or anything. Yeah, it's a lot of time, but it, it's really interesting and, it, and it's kind of engaging because you're not just like, okay, I'm not just plodding along or you're not just set in your ways and doing the thing as you go down the railroad. You have to be really on your toes and be like, okay, well, how do I need to, you know, how do I handle these cars as gentle as I can? All right, how, incoming. How do I do a good job? So incoming, you're kicking. I don't see, I, I don't see you I or the three. cars yet. Oh, there, there they are. Are you kicking them in groups? Yeah, well, I accidentally went down the wrong line, so you're getting three at a time, then I'm going to kick the other oh, three. Oh, I see. <laughs> I yeah. see. That's fine. Don't worry about right. it. It'll be fine. And you left the brakes off on these, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they are brakeless, sir. They are... I don't know how legal any of this uh, is, but, you know, it's we're going for it. Well, kicking cars, I mean, you probably wouldn't do a kick like this. This is a pretty far kick, but... Um, a lot of railroads do still kick cars. And actually, like, that, I did that video about the hump yard and what they do at the hump and everything. Where and did you put Montezuma? Uh, it's over here on the main. Oh, we're going to kick all the way up to the main. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was figuring. Oh, okay, gotcha. oh I guess oh, I, oh, I guess we could have just done that right here. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. It smarter. works. Six, six on one end, ah, half whatever. a dozen the other. Is it that what it, it works. We're railroading. Yeah, six of one, half a dozen the other. No, but this has got a link in it. No! We're, du we're double link. Okay, back, back. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now, I feel like show. those ones have a break on them. Actually, is this the issue? Oh, yeah. yeah they that do. would uh, that they would stopped. seem to be I'll true. I'll keep pushing. Yeah. Push, push, mush. Oh. Okay. Betsy came off the rail there for a second. It's All right, fine. Now you're good. One of the one of the funny things, if you ever come visit us at the Colorado Railroad Museum, Con, uh, one of the funny things you'll see is that we had to extend the first stall for 491 because she didn't fit. Mm hmm. When they built the shop, we didn't own 491. It was owned by a, a different historical society, and they just displayed it at the museum. And then we ended up taking ownership back in, like, 2013 or 2014. Uh, and we went and test fit it, and it's like, nope, misses it by that much. It's, like, three feet too long, like a meter too long. 
And that's and so just they, so you can uh, actually close the doors, like, on it? Right. You can't close the doors. It didn't fit inside. So they put a roll-up door on the back. They knocked out the brick wall, put a roll-up door up. Uh, and eventually, they added a structure on the back. But the, the first year for Polar Express that we had to have the engine inside, because uh, the actually, the first year of Polar Express we did, she had to sit outside in 2014 because she didn't fit. And you didn't want to asphyxiate everyone, and, and the smoke jack didn't work and all this stuff. So it's looking nice down there. Dude, uh, you can link track. You can move the, sorry, you can move round table to a specific, any spot you want, and then link a track to the end of it. Where it at oh, that that's spot. Neat. That's you know cool how, you know how much of a pain in the butt it was to line up track before? That used to be so painful. Like on that round table. This is actually update. amazing. Yeah. Like I did this in 30 seconds. Just throw the shed down, link two tracks, boom, done. That's actually crazy. But that is crazy. This shed yeah. is very full of grass, by the way, just because of the way the grass <laughs> clips through. No, no offense. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's still gonna work. I'm just. I'll, I'll send up some. Uh, send some roundup. Yeah, we need a like we up, need a lawnmower ASAP over here. It's yeah. it's pretty bad. <laughs> but it's good the, enough. The, to throw throw Betsy the, in it. The second year we did Polar, uh, we didn't have the shed basically tacked on the end. We just had the roll up door. And 491 was just long enough that you'd, you'd back her with the doors, both doors open, you'd back her into the shop, and then you'd close the front roundhouse doors, and you'd just, just ever so slowly, just bump into them with the knuckle of the front of the engine. You'd slowly move it forwards till it touched the front doors. And then, and only then, was she long enough that <laughs> you could shut the roll-up door, and it would come down behind the tender tank on the end sill. And so you just have this giant knuckle coupler and the butt of the sticking tender out. sticking out That's underneath funny. the door. It's like, really? We couldn't get three more feet? Come on. Heiss is somewhere up there. You're on the I bridge. I am up the 2%. Yeah, I've just passed the bridge. Interesting. So I'm going to go to the sawmill and throw some switches for you. Sounds good. Make sure you're set up to go here past the sawmill. Oh, yeah, we got a train coming down on the main line in uh, about 35 seconds. Gonna need you to throw those switches. Yep, that's, uh, that's how that works. Yeah, that's how it works. It's a good good radio impression. Sound, sound pretty good. Actually, it would be like... Yeah, pretty much. Beep, 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 That was the guy ripping the paper for the next, you know? I appreciate the dedication to the uh, the sound effects here. Yeah, it's we're important. really we're on a high budget production here. It's very very high budget. I love these telegraph houses, man. They've really changed the experience. I cannot believe how much of an impact they had. Like I knew it was going to be nice knowing, like, okay, yeah. well, I can leave an engine somewhere. I don't have to start from the freight depot every time, or my game crashes seventeen times. Hmm. Uh, you know, you could just teleport and start over. It's the which leaving is the engines thing, man. So That's nice. so. It's so nice to like. You know, like Betsy's at the smelter. We'll have the helper engines there. We'll have a couple. We got to get another 060 to be the smelter or something like a climax. Or, or a better, well, better you know helper engine. We should engine have a Shea. Just have a Shea yeah. be the yard engine of the smelter. The poor guy who has to work the smelter has to deal with the Shea. Just so slow. Yeah. I've heard it so painfully <laughs> it, It'll push, slow. though. It'll work. 5,896 pounds attractive effort. It's really not that much. Montezuma has only 3,600 pounds. So the Shea is still, you know, Strong enough to be a good shunting engine. At, it should. At three it's kilometers. It's kind of hour. ridiculous that it's a geared engine and that's how little power it has, but yeah, it's it, itty it bitty. It kind of looks like I built it in my garage. I'm just saying. Uh, that like, that's pretty accurate for a T boiler shave. Like like some dude built it in the garage kind of vibe. Like that yeah, is just that is the feel. Together. Well, perfect. We're heading back to the uh, freight depot. I don't know. I we didn't check how much iron we had at the. Oh, we didn't. Oh, we just wait. Sent it. I can, can just teleport warp back there. Yeah, yeah. Go look. I'm gonna go Report look. Report back shortly, there, sir. Dude, actually, we got stacks. We actually have a lot of. We stacks. got stacks on stacks. Dude, we got. We got. We're out of cordwood again already. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, this thing sucks back cordwood. It's not it even just funny. Eats the cordwood. Do we have any iron in the pile left? I the pile is very small. I feel like we do though. Let me check the station here. We have two out of a thousand. Okay, so we've used up all the cordwood already. <laughs> and we've used up all the cord. Dude, the smelter is hungry. It is a hungry machine. Well, when you're trying to smelt iron and like actually refine iron using wood as your hot. fuel source. Yeah. Yeah. I wish it was upgradable. Okay, so we have bring 48 coal, but... rails. Oh wow, that's like and that's almost five raw cars, iron isn't it? beams. Is it ten or twenty rails to a car? I can't. Remember. I think it's ten. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. So we have so four cars, cars and rails, rails, and then I think and... it's it's what three raw iron per car. Three. Yeah. So we're we're about to make some cash, man. That's exciting. Okay, so we could fill up. We have we could fill up like 
just raw iron. We have 24 raw iron. We could do a train of just raw iron, and that would be, um, <laughs> that goodness. would be the full the full set of cards. That would be outstanding. I think that's a good idea for next episode and uh, put Montezuma on its knees and make it beg. Yeah. The <laughs> smelter works the same as the logging camp, right? Like if, if we, or the sawmill, if we fill up all the cars, uh, like all of one industry, they can fill up all the rails. It'll just produce more raw iron with the products. Like it, it'll do the same yeah. thing. It's still, okay. So that's good. So we, there's no risk of us taking only the one resource and not the other then basically. Yeah, we can grab whichever. I think rails are more dense money per car, but I think they're also heavier. I don't remember. Okay, well, good to know. We'll find out. Anyway, yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, I'm already back at the freight depot. No big deal. Just... I'm pulling into the shunt lane right now. All right, perfect. Park those cordwood cars somewhere so we don't have to deal with them. Preferably not in the same lane as all the other cars like I did last time because that's, oh, well, wow, you're right you know, here. How's it going? Fine. I'm on the main, so I mean, oh, it's, I it's fine. We can just no make longer, the other track the main it's now. It's no longer the main. <laughs> it's fine. We're just fouling things up. We're, yeah, it's all but good. Montezuma's going to be the next engine over the road anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. And we still got more open tracks, so. Yeah, exactly. That'll but yeah, that. let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Uh, obviously, we got to get more iron and then get more engines. Uh, I actually have, actually, I didn't do the check. I have $1,900 now. Um, so Ooh, we're, getting, we're, getting we're getting close there. One full train of raw iron might be enough to do it to get us to the point of... 3100 to buy the Glenbrook probably right I dude think. that's gonna be awesome yeah we should be able to get there but yeah uh make sure you guys of course like subscribe check out heise's channel and uh we'll see you all next time bye bye